Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So putting the pieces of the relationship together, bit by bit, piece by piece, this is what I'm referring to. I'm referring to unraveling the narcissistic relationship that you were a part of. Perhaps you still are a part of it and you're looking to get answers and you're trying to figure out what happened, when, where, how, why, with whom, what was the purpose of this whole relationship. As you exit the relationship, the further you get away from the narcissistic relationship, and again, if, if you were discarded, my heart goes out to you. If you had to end it yourself, same thing, my heart goes out to you. Being in a narcissistic relationship for one minute is one minute too long, but once you're out of these relationships, and let's say that you have gone no contact, blocked the narcissist, deleted them, removed all fly monkeys and people associated with them, if, if you've done that or you're about to, you're gonna get clarity. You are gonna get space, time, and distance away from not only the narcissist, but away from that relationship. And what will happen each and every day is you are gonna figure out more and more of what that relationship was was it what you thought it was? Were you missing what you never had? Could you have tried harder? Should you have tried harder? Did your resources really become as decimated and depleted as perhaps you thought? These questions and so many more will be revealed. The answers will be given to you by yourself. Now keep in mind this, the narcissist will not give you closure. They never ever want to introspect. They don't want to be accountable. They do not want to admit their poor behavior and they certainly don't want to let you off the hook. They want you stuck in the narcissistic fog. They want you pining for them. They want you not being able to get out of that low vibrational quagmire state where they exist. But once the relationship ends and the sun begins to shine on you and you begin to really get focused on not only that relationship, but you unravel all the bits and pieces of it in all of the years and the, the decades perhaps, this is when you begin to get stronger. This is when you begin to really heal. It's when you get answers to the questions that you had. It's when you give yourself closure. And each and every day, week, month, perhaps a year, you will get what I call light bulbs. And these are called light bulb moments. I created a few videos on the light bulb moments. You will get these when you least expect them. You will get them when you have vivid dreams, which will include the narcissist and other peculiar or rather strange individuals, perhaps. But you will get the light bulb moments also when you're driving in a car on the freeway, when you're listening to a song, when you are smelling a perfume, when you are getting ready to go to bed, when you are reading or journaling. You never know when you're gonna get a light bulb moment. Another pivotal time when you get light bulb moments is when you're talking with somebody or you're listening to some words and somebody will say something that you hadn't heard of in a long time or that some phrase or something that only the narcissist said to you. And then you'd be like, oh my gosh, that's what that meant. Light bulb moments are pivotal. They are a instrumental part of the healing path. And when you get light bulb moments, what you are doing is you are beginning to put pieces of the puzzle together of that relationship that you were a part of. Now, I want, to under, I want you to understand one thing. If you were in a stable or healthy relationship, usually if it's a friendship, romantic, parental, part of a family unit, or whatever, coworker, neighbor, usually what happens is when those relationships end, you move on and you don't really think about those people any longer. In other words, you don't have to heal from the relationship. One indicator on how you know that you were in a narcissistic relationship, and there are many, but one is if you have to heal from the relationship, that means you endured and or experienced abuse, perhaps even financial abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, physical abuse at times. But this relationship rocked you to your core. It almost took you down for the count, but it didn't. And what happened along the way is you kept on giving to a fault. Perhaps you were even a people pleaser, a yes person. I'm certain you didn't have boundaries or if you did, they were decimated. And you were working for the relationship. You were working for the narcissist. And the narcissist wanted you to put them high on a pedestal and, to have, and for you to become an unpaid helper or a walking apology. They wanted you to give to a fault. They wanted you to be on command, on demand whenever they commanded it. In other words, you, they wanted you to be on call 24 seven. 
And this is why you were groomed, you were tricked and you were trapped. This is why when the phone would ring or you would get a text, you would drop every single thing you were doing and you would answer that text or phone call immediately, specifically if it was from the narcissist because they needed to hear you. They needed to know what you were doing. They needed to control your day. They needed to control your mental outlook, your capacity. They wanted to pepper you with abuse and they wanted to take you really high and drop you really low and push you away and pull you back in on that roller coaster of emotions. And this worked for a period of time, which was the length of the relationship. But once the relationship ended and you got clarity, first of all, you had to put yourself back together. Second of all, you had to find that diamond in the rough, the needle in a haystack, which is the narcissistic abusive cycle. You had to wrap your head around that that's the relationship you were in. And that yes, it did almost take you down for the count. The third thing you had to do is slow your life down fourth thing you had to do was process and understand that nobody was going to come knock on your door to save you and that many people that you thought were your friends they turned out to be flying monkeys or people grabbing their popcorn and watching your life implode these people too will get their day believe me when i tell you everybody's life goes sideways at, at one period or another we cannot predict the future we cannot live in the past we need to live in the present moment but each and every day none of us are guaranteed to be here that's why you need to make the most of your time but putting the pieces of the puzzle together, this will happen. It will happen the further you get away from the relationship. And when you understand that that relationship, it was unlike anything that you've ever experienced. You weren't taught narcissism in school, so you weren't prepared for that relationship. You did not know what gaslighting was. You didn't know what the silent treatment was. You didn't know what the smear campaign was. You certainly didn't know what being triangulated meant. You didn't know about object constancy. You didn't know what a rage fit was. You just thought that this person was having a, b a bad day, week, month, year, decade, or life. And you kept on making excuses for the person, which was the narcissist. You kept on giving to a fault. And you kept on looking the other way or turning a blind eye or not trusting your instincts or intuition and ignoring red flags. This is what we did when we were in the relationship. But when you get out of it, you begin to get light bulb moments. You begin to get clarity you begin to realize, oh my goodness, the pieces of the puzzle are fitting together. That's why the narcissist said this. That's why when they went away and they claimed that they, were, they didn't have phone service or phone reception for two or three days, even though they were in a major city and an alleged friend or somebody else was gone during that same period of time, oh my gosh, that's what it was. Because there was evidence all throughout the relationship about what was happening with you by the narcissist. And they wanted to keep you off their scent they never wanted you to figure out that they were a narcissist. They did not want you to put the pieces of the puzzle together. They did not want you to see behind the mask and they did not want you to understand that they tried their best to decimate you. They wanted to take everything from you, your time, your money, your energy, your effort, your love, your empathy, your relationships, your health, your status, your reputation. They wanted to take everything away, your hobbies, your favorite foods, your favorite locations, your favorite music. They wanted to take everything from you. And again, they succeeded for a period of time until they didn't. This is why when you break free from the narcissistic relationship after a period of time, which is a very pivotal period of time, it's called the void. You have to fill that void with yourself. And you have to really understand the narcissist is never going to give you closure. They're never going to give you any bit of information as to why they did what they did and how they took advantage of you and manipulated you. But this is all part of the process. It's part of the path. Picture, if you will, a tunnel. You need to go through the tunnel of healing and you need to find a little bit of light, a little ray of sunshine at the end of the tunnel. And you need to keep working through the tunnel. You can't go around the healing path of the narcissistic relationship. You need to go through it. And when you go through it and punch the narcissistic relationship right in the nose and knock it out for the count, that's when the light at the end of the tunnel gets bigger and bigger. And that's when you have boundaries. That's when you get more and more pieces of the puzzle that will fit together perfectly. And when I say perfectly, I mean this is better than any Hollywood movie, any, any transcript that could be written for a movie. Hollywood has nothing on your life, absolutely zero. Your life is not only a fantastic and amazing experience that almost really took you down but it's real it's not a movie it's real so that's why one of your friends you're, you're communicating with your friends when you're in a relationship or certainly post relationship you're trying to explain to them what happened or how you were feeling or what was going on and if your friends had not gone through the narcissistic abusive cycle they can't wrap their head around it they think that you're the one with problems they think you're the one that's got to go get help they think that the person that you're talking about was the best thing since sliced bread because that's the version of the person they saw but they weren't in the house with you 24 seven. 
They weren't isolated in their own house. They weren't being peppered with abuse, with doors being slammed, with rage fits when there's no one else in the house but the two of you, with being hung up on, with being told your cooking is horrible, that you can't clean, you're worthless, that no one wants to be around you, that they should have never married you, that your mom told them that they should have never even gotten involved with you, that you're lucky to be in a relationship with them. When you're told all these things, verbal abuse is what it is essentially, and you're told this day in and day out, and then every once in a while you're told that you're a good person and, and that they love you and fake empathy and fake love, this is from the narcissist, it's not good because you don't know what to expect. You're, you're kept off kilter. You're kept off balance. That is why the trauma bond is the most challenging thing to break known to humankind. It is, it is the most challenging experience to not only be caught up in it because you don't know what it is, but number two, to, to break the cycle. And believe me, when you did it, and if you did do it, drop comments below, it was no small task. It, was a, it took you a mountain of work. It took you a lot of time. But if you did it, please pay it forward and help the community. If you didn't and you're looking to do it, take time. Be calm, be centered, be stoic, be patient, be within yourself. Understand the narcissist never had your best interest at heart back then. They certainly don't now and they never will in the future. You need to heal. You need to surround yourself with like-minded people or people who care about you. You need to be able to trust people that actually, let's rephrase that. You need to trust yourself enough to allow some people in your life if that's what you want to do. If you're in the cocoon of boundaries and you're self-isolating post-relationship, I did that myself. If that's where you are, that's where you should be. There's no such thing as a coincidence. You are meant to be exactly where you are right now on this planet, just like I am here in the Carolina woods. Maybe you're going to bed right now. Maybe you're waking up. Maybe you're on the beach. Maybe you're in an airplane. Maybe you are having a coffee. Who knows? But you're meant to be exactly where you are and healing is instrumental. You can't just put a Band-Aid on the relationship, post-narcissistic relationship. It is unlike any other relationship that you've had. That's why you get light bulb moments. That's why you have to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Imagine if you will, when you were younger, or maybe you still do this as if you're older, you would go to the store, a hobby shop perhaps, and you would buy a puzzle. Maybe it had 5,000 pieces, and you would spread it out all over the kitchen table or a table, and you would begin putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And in the beginning, you would look for the corners of the puzzle usually, or the edges, and you would try to put those together. And when you found those edges or the corners, you would be like, oh my gosh, I got the four corners, this is great. And now I have the edges lined up. So now you had an outline of the puzzle. Really understand what I'm mentioning to you. Then slowly you had to get away from that puzzle because you were getting a little tired or you had to do something different or you wanted to break. And then you went back to it maybe a couple hours later, maybe a day later, maybe a week later. And then you put more pieces of the puzzle together. And over time, what happened? You were maybe within 100 pieces of putting that puzzle together completely, the 5,000 piece puzzle set. And you were so excited because you could see the picture of the puzzle coming to light, you could see what it actually was. It looked the same as it was on the box, but now you had accomplished something. You were putting the pieces together from that box of the puzzle. Finally, you found one piece left and you placed it in the puzzle and you sat back in your chair and said, yes, I did it. I accomplished the puzzle, a 5,000 piece puzzle just by myself. I did this. This is remarkable. It was so fun. It was a challenge, but I did it. That is the narcissistic relationship, post relationship in a nutshell. You and only you can put the pieces of the puzzle together. The videos will help you out. Journaling will certainly help you out. And therapists may help you out. Slowing your life down will definitely help you out. Understanding that most people that have not gone through a relationship, a toxic, challenging, narcissistic relationship, they're gonna get burned out. They don't have the bandwidth for it because they're living in the everyday fog and that's not their fault. They just don't know what you're talking about. You see, we, People who have come through the fire and risen through the ashes like a phoenix post-narcissistic relationship when we put ourselves back together, dusted ourselves off and picked ourselves up by the bootstraps. We speak a separate language than the rest of the planet. We, we understand that we are now in the third version of ourselves, the strongest, most galvanized version of ourselves known to humankind because we have been through the fire and we punched the narcissistic relationship in the nose and we beat it. We figured out who they were. We figured out what they were doing to us. We got the terms, the definitions, the glossary on the narcissistic abusive cycle nailed down pat. We have our PhD and or masters in narcissism 101 because we live our lives, a period of our lives in the relationship. Now, having said all those things, that's why you have to put the puzzle pieces together. No one else can do it for you. That's why when you get a light bulb moment, whether it is in the morning after you've had a dream, a very vivid dream, maybe it included the narcissist, or maybe you were on a plane and you open up a brochure or a magazine or something and you saw something and you're like, oh my gosh, that's what that meant. That's what that word was. 
That's why they kept saying that when you get these pieces of the puzzle, you need to really slow down whatever you're doing and, and really understand that there's a reason that that ha has revealed itself right then and there for you. It's because you are getting more and more clear. You are getting further away from the relationship and you are seeing things crystal clear. You're seeing the whole scope of the relationship. You're seeing the whole body of the relationship and you're seeing all the puzzle pieces fitting in perfectly. When this happens, it's a beautiful thing because it will change your life for the betterment forever. It sincerely will. Understand a few things. One, many people post narcissistic relationship, they don't find the needle in the haystack. They don't know what kind of relationship they were in. They're not fortunate like you are. Number two, many people don't do the deep dive because it's too painful and they stay trapped in the narcissistic fog. Many people, again, find the wisdom and they understand what they're up against, but they don't want to like really, really peel the layers of the onion back. It's too painful. Then there are people like you who are doing everything possible to heal. You're putting those pieces together day by day, week by week, maybe even month by month, but your 5,000 piece puzzle set is getting filled in. And when it is filled in completely or very close to it, you will have healed. You will have said to yourself, oh my gosh, I get it. I understand this. I understand everything that they were doing. I understand why they stayed out late at night. I understand why they were gone every morning at the crack of dawn before I was even out of bed. I understand why they kept me strung along when they were on alleged stayovers or weekend seminar trips and they told me they didn't have phone reception or they told me that they couldn't check their messages. I understand exactly why they financially abused me because they could and why they were squirreling away their own money because they were financially abusing me and they never wanted me to figure it out. Now I understand why they wanted me to put the house in their name. Now I understand why they wanted me to raise their kids while they were out galvanting the globe. And then once the kids got to be a certain age, maybe high school level, they discarded me because I served my purpose. Every narcissistic relationship, A, has a purpose, B, has an expiration date. And you provided something for the narcissist that they could not find elsewhere. That is a fact. But once they took what they wanted from you, Example, raising the kids, maybe when they turned high school age or maybe they graduated college, whatever it was, or turned 18, who knows? Then they said, all right, that's it. Mission accomplished, done. Now I'm gonna divorce you, crumble you up like a sheet of paper, try and take every asset from you and try to drive wedges between you and the kids. This is what they do. It, it's happening right now as I'm creating this video. It's happening right now as you are consuming the video. But when you wrap your head around what the your purpose in the narcissistic relationship was, it was not what you thought it was. You thought you entered a kind, loving, stable, healthy relationship because that's the mask that you saw in the person that you entered the relationship in. But the narcissist knew who you were way before you knew yourself. And in that relationship, you lost yourself in order to find, find yourself. That's what these relationships do to you once you've healed. Because before you entered the relationship, you probably were a people pleaser, or wearing rose-colored glasses and just going through life and living in the everyday fog. You met the narcissist, they sized you up, they figured out, oh my gosh, this person is amazing. They're actually an empath and they have so many resources. I'm gonna take this from them for X number of years, maybe six or seven years. Then I'm gonna discard them because I'll have a new supply lined up. And then I'll leave this person, which was you reeling. You'll never figure it out because I'm smarter than you and I know how smart you are. You'll never figure it out. And my hope is they actually don't even exist any longer. And I will blow up every social network, every uh, support system you had in place. And then I'll see what you do. But the thing is, you healed. You put yourself back together. You got those light bulb moments. You slowed your life down. You processed things and you understood that that relationship was nothing but manipulation, smoke, mirrors. It was built on quicksand and it wasn't your fault. Play this part again. The relationship was not your fault. The narcissist did not walk up to you and hand you a two-page report and say, this is who I am. This is what I will do to you. If you want to enter the relationship, let's proceed. If you don't, I'm going to find another person I can take from. But they didn't do that. They entered the relationship under false pretenses. In other words, they acted like they were one person when they were somebody completely different. So you were manipulated, you were tricked and trapped, and you escaped that narcissistic fog. You broke the trauma bond, you healed, you got the light bulb moments, and you put the pieces of the puzzle together. Before I close the video, understand something one more time. If you were in a stable or healthier relationship, you don't have to put pieces of the puzzle together. You certainly don't have to heal. What you do is you probably spend a couple days a week, maybe a month, processing the relationship, and then you let it go, and. You just go back into life, that's what people do. But when you are in a challenging or toxic relationship that almost took you down for the count, you have to heal, there's no other way. That's why these relationships are the most toxic and challenging known to humankind. You need to break free from these things, if not now, when, understand the message. So putting the pieces of the puzzle together, this is something that can only be done by you. 
you can get all the guidance, the wisdom, and you can communicate with people, you can do whatever you need to do, and I strongly suggest you do it with people that have your best interest at heart, but they can't put the pieces of the puzzle together for you. They can only share experiences and wisdom with you, and then you're gonna have to process things and figure out, oh my gosh, that is what that meant. I get it now, I understand. Because this was your life, and this is your life, and this is your experience. I understand the message. Everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that. You are not alone. I love you all. God bless you. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. And again, people, I am not reading a script. This is me, free flow, talking from my real life experiences. I love you all. God bless you. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye, guys.